Hello, my name is Anthony, and today I will be teaching you about the Springboard Doctrine. To best understand the Springboard Doctrine, it is important to first gain a basic understanding of the circumstances that give rise to its application. This requires a short explanation of the breach of confidence. In circumstances where there is confidential information, there will be an obligation of confidence on those privy to said information. If there is a threatened or actual disclosure of this information, then the owner of the information will attempt to find a way to prevent the information from being used. In a commercial context, it is the misuse of this confidential information that gives the confidant a springboard or head start in savings of time and or cost. The springboard doctrine prevents anyone who has obtained information in confidence from using it as a springboard for activities that are detrimental to the confidant. It applies even when the confidential information has been published or is available to the public. The Springboard Doctrine originated from the judgment of Justice Roxburgh in Terrapin Limited and Builders Supply Co. Limited in 1967. His Honour held that a person who has obtained information in confidence is not allowed to use it as a springboard for activities detrimental to the person who made the confidential communication. Confidential information would remain a springboard even when all the features have been published or can be ascertained by actual inspection by any member of the public. This means publication of the information does not relieve the confidant of the obligation not to use the information. Because of the existence of a possible springboard, the possessor of such information must be placed under a special disability in the field of competition to ensure that they do not get an unfair start. An example of an unfair start would be that received confidential information saved a competitor a great deal of labour, calculation and careful draftsmanship. It is important to note that merely because a confidential process or combination is simple would not prevent it from being protected by the springboard doctrine. An owner of confidential information would argue the springboard doctrine applies so they can receive an injunction. This injunction would prevent the competitor from using the confidential information to obtain an unfair start. Regarding the injunction's time limit, under the Springboard Doctrine, a confidant remains affected by an obligation of confidence for as long as labour, time and expense may be required for a member of the public to reproduce the information. However, it was held in Potter's Ballatini Limited and Weston Baker in 1977 that a springboard injunction period does not last forever. In Potter's Ballatini Limited in Weston Baker, a springboard injunction was held to only last for as long as the court deems necessary. The duration of the injunction is therefore a question of degree depending on the particular case, although it is recognised the starting point for a springboard period is that it is one of limited duration. So by way of example, let's say I've started a new business manufacturing a new invention, and I've shared the design and manufacturing process for this invention with my employees. Then let's say, hypothetically, one employee leaves and takes the confidential information I have given him to start his own business making a competing product. I would then go to court seeking an injunction against his previous employee to prevent them from using this confidential information to gain an unfair start in the market. I would then go to court seeking an injunction against his previous employee to prevent them from getting an unfair start in the market. If awarded, this injunction would last for as long as labour, time and expense may be required for a member of the public to reproduce the information.